Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today a civilization that can spam the heck out of its cavalry takes on a civilization that can spam the heck out of, well, everything else. As MBL, playing as the Poles in green, prepares to take on the Viper, playing as the Aztecs in yellow. Now all the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age ASAP. Not a bad time for us to take a look at the Civ matchup that we are going to be watching today. The Poles are a civilization that does focus on its cavalry. Their scout line units come with a small attack bonus against archers and can be upgraded to do trample damage, which is very helpful in the late game since Poles are one of the only two civs in the game to have their hussars replaced with winged hussars, which are already tankier and stronger than normal hussars. Now, if you want to leave the light meal aside, want to go straight for the heavy main course, the heavy cavalry, well... Pole knights and cavaliers can be upgraded to cost a lot less gold, and I mean it, a 60% gold discount, so it becomes much easier to spam these heavy units starting in the castle age. Now to back up their cavalry, the poles can field their unique unit, the Oboch, a tanky well-armored infantry unit whose attack actually reduces both the melee and the pierce armor of its opponent by one with every single swipe of his giant comically oversized warhammer. That's to support production of their military. Pole stone miners also generate gold as they work the quarry. Pole farmers have access. We'll see it, I guess, at some point. Eventually, I'm hoping, <laughs> assuming they have access to a unique structure called the full work, which replaces their mill, automatically adds 8% of a value of a farm seeded in its radius to the coffers, while also providing five population space. And pole villagers like Viking berserkers are harder to raid because starting in the feudal age, they do regenerate HP. Now, pivoting. To somebody who might want to raid those pole villagers, we've got the Viper playing as the Aztecs in yellow, very much a warrior monk civilization. Their monks gain five hit points for every single monk tech that's researched, so a fully upgraded Aztec monk comes with a whopping 100 HP. And to help with the gold cost of upgrading your monks, every single relic that the Aztec collects generates 33% more gold. Now, to support their monks on the battlefield, all Aztec military units are trained 11% faster. Their skirmishers can be upgraded to get extra range and attack, and their infantry can be upgraded to get a massive plus four attack boost, which does benefit their unique unit, the Jaguar Warrior, an overall middle of the road infantry unit that does come with a massive plus 10, plus 11 attack bonus against other infantry units. Now, to support their military production, Aztec villagers do carry three extra resources right from the very beginning of the game. And if you take a look at the top left of your screen, you'll see they start with 50 extra gold, which basically means they either get loom for free or they can harass you with a few extra militiamen. So those are the two civilizations we've got before us. Let's take a look at the map, see the attack path. Aside from this one kind of uh, partitioning forest and a very thin sliver, the attack path is pretty much open between the two bases. Uh, a couple of trees here and there, not really too much density in between them. Both players, 16 villagers a pop. Somehow always works out that uh, we take a look at the bases right at the 15, 16 villager mark. Let's see what's going on with the Aztec base. Primary gold and stone exposed to the front. That's not good. Additional gold also very much to the front. And additional gold to the rear. Where's the extra stone? Bottom right. So the Viper, yuckety yuck. Three out of the five resources he's got are very much forward base and exposed here in a big open space with a lot of high ground. So MBL might want to put a pressure on this specific Bermuda's triangle of resources. Berries off to the south. Forests, pretty thick, juicy forests. I mean, this is a ridiculously thick forest uh, in pretty helpful position, to be honest. Wall off's not too difficult in this kind of base. Speaking of thick, juicy forests, looks like MBL's also got a few of his own over here, primary gold. In the forward position, but not really on the attack path. His stone is nice and secure to the back, which for the poles is always fantastic. Remember, every three stone they collect from the quarry, from the rock pile, well, they get one gold for every three, which is just a ludicrous amount of gold. Basically, take 1750 divided by three, and that's how much extra gold they get for literally doing nothing but what they were going to do anyway, which is work the mines. Extra gold to the front, extra stone to the front. So whereas the Viper has three of his main resources, MBL has two of his main resources exposed to the front. And, uh, oh goodness, a third gold very annoyingly placed on the other side of a forest here. Yuck. 
So not a great start for either player, to be honest. Who's kidding who? Although the berries, the pretty lemon bushes with the blue butterflies are uh, nice and secure to the back. By the way, this is the full work. You click on it. Any farm seeded within this radius, 8% of that farm's value gets automatically added to the bankroll. And then you have to basically work the rest of the 92%, the remaining 92% of the farm that's there. And that's just a super cool feature that allows the poles to absolutely get a small but very important boost to their food income. And for a civilization, like I said, that likes to spam their cavalry light or heavy, any extra re any extra feature bonus, etc., is just great news for them. Both players are now in the feudal age MBL investigating, seeing what he can get done here. It looks like his scout could have been on the high ground there, but doesn't really decide to engage. I'm assuming these villagers have loom. Of course they do. And so with two villagers right next to a barracks where this guy can pop out at any second, I don't see MBL really sticking around for much. At the same time, the Viper has discovered where his opponent is. I'm, I'm always curious to see based on where players spawn, because if I spawned where MBL spawned, I would assume that my opponent is here. And so I'm always curious to see their line of sight and see if they... I mean, where they explored and how they explored. It kind of looks like he went south first and then broadly went across to the west. Whereas if I spawn where the Viper spawned, I would assume that my opponent is right here, opposite of me. And also the Viper with a weird kind of loop-de-loop -loop here. <laughs> but welcome to Age of Empires, where symmetry is just a random word. That means nothing when it comes to map spawn and generation. The final goat does fall to the pole harvester. And it looks like MBL is interested in walling this off, but the scout is making an issue of this. Ooh, he's trying to wall in so that the Viper can't escape with the scout. Unfortunately for the Viper, it looks like he's going to suffer the first loss of the game. MBL is going to draw first blood. And down goes the Eagle Scout just in time for a Spearman to show up a little bit late to the party. Poking and prodding at the uh, Palisade Gate is the... Other Palisade to the top here. Yeah, he's almost completed that one as well. So fully walled off. And here comes the choo-choo train of Aztec military. Skirmishers and a Spearman. Skirmisher and an Eagle Warrior. Literally nine army count to four at the moment. And this is something you always have to be worried about with when you're playing against the Aztecs. Is just their ability with the 11% faster training time. They can spiral completely out of control. And they can absolutely, I think the word is snowball that I'm looking for. Although I guess spiral. Uh, spiral has like a negative connotation, right? Like M MBL's chances of winning might be spiraling out of control. Whereas the Viper's military count is snowballing out of control. Palisade Gate is almost down. A few brave, but pretty much dead pole skirmishers are here. They are taking on not only a much larger force of skirmisher, but also a counter eagle unit. And so all of a sudden... <laughs> one kill to zero becomes four kills to one. Tower, will it be enough to shoo this away? MBL, I like it, has repaired as much as he could the Palisade for the moment. To be honest, let's see. Because I guess the Viper can still technically attack this Palisade, but then even if he busts through, there's not a lot of space. This is, by the way, a perfectly placed tower to push your opponent off of their attack. Villager not really gathering. Oh, this is so annoying when this happens because this is not like walking through a few tiles of uh, tower fire. This would be walking through at least 10 to 15 tiles, if not more, depending on uh, the pathing, which with this game is never a sure thing. And there we go. MBL has full on Howard Hughes himself completely closed in. Now, somebody did comment earlier that they didn't really understand my Howard Hughes comment. Uh, and then they Googled it and it, <laughs> somebody from the 1930s, it, it's like, uh, it was a billionaire, an American billionaire who basically was an engineer and a pilot and, uh, yeah, all these kinds of like professional designations related to flight. And then he used his family's money to get into Hollywood and make movies. But in the later stages of his life, he became very germaphobic and the Simpsons, by the way, made a, uh, made a, um, uh, spoof of it with Mr. Burns when he made the uh I forget if it was the spruce moose the spruce goose whatever it was the name of the 
airplane, but basically he became very germaphobic, didn't really like to touch anyone, talk to anyone, walled himself in. There were rumors that he drank his own urine in what Gary Busey would describe as the ultimate form of recycling. Um, and that's who Howard Hughes is. So when I say somebody has gone full Howard Hughes, I mean they have walled themselves in completely with no ability to enter or exit. Of course, a little asterisk with the gate up top, easy for MBL to exit. By the way, speaking of MBL, he is ahead one villager. He's ahead four army count, but he is seriously down in terms of game progress because the Viper is a minute and 20 seconds away from hitting the old castle age, and he's going to get forging as well, which tells me, what, more eagles on the menu? That we are probably going to see a bunch of eagles trained, if not even the eagle warrior upgrade gotten. Now the Viper is a minute away, MBL. He's going to have to keep the pressure on this side of the map. He's finally starting to gather the resources. He's got half the gold, almost half the food that he needs to go up to Castle Age. Archer and a scout. Will they be enough to take down that one, or rather two archers? I didn't see you, Mr. Green, behind the palm tree. They are not. That one Eagle Warrior does escape with what? One HP? Two HP, pardon me. Center battle here. It looks like the Viper's army count has been completely reset. And it's going to get reset even more now. But he's in Castle Age. Oh, no. Look at MBL's resources. How does he not have more food? Okay, now we go. He's buying food now. But to be honest, he does have a, a sliver of an opportunity here. The Viper is moving north with a Siege Workshop. Aggressive style. But MBL, okay. Opportunity kind of squandered. I was going to say, if you are behind and your opponent is at Castle, you need to keep the pressure on their side of the map so that they don't move forward. Because the last thing you want to do while you're heading up to Castle and saving your resources for military units, military production facilities, upgrades, improvements, etc., is your opponent right in your face. And now Eagle Scouts have become Eagle Warriors. Four Pierce Arbor basically means that not only skirmishers that do three damage, but even archers that do five are going to be basically... I mean, it's like attacking a, a fully armored knight with steel armor, and you're attacking it with a shoelace. That's what uh, the analogy I can think of right now of these eagles getting attacked by this feudal age archer force. Let's see what's going on to the north where the viper with that siege workshop. Okay, are we going to get to see an Aztec smush? Is bombarding this position and wall off created in theory. And then denied and cancelled because the Mangonel's already busted its way through here. Meanwhile, Eagles continue to try to bust through the house. The Viper is multi-pronging it right now. MBL, though, to be fair, is 30 seconds away from the next stage. He's ke kept the pace with Villager count. And even if the Viper trains one more Villager than him right now with 15 seconds left on the clock, MBL's just going to be down two Villagers. Okay, make that three Villagers as the Viper gets the first Vil kill of the game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Looks like Eagles are busted in here, but they're facing a town center full of villagers. Let's see what MBL decides to do. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Not something I really like to do very often. He's going for a castle. Why there? I expected if he was going to go for a castle, maybe somewhere here. The Viper has sold wood, so no more siege for him. He is going full flesh and blood. Three villager kills for him now. Okay, MBL's in a bit of trouble. He's starting to... Uh, not only is he losing more and more villagers now, five, but he has idled 19 out of 38 of his economy. Half his economy idled as it constructs this pole castle. He does... Uh, now, Schlachta, the upgrade that makes nightline units cost 60% less gold. So they basically go from 75 gold to 30. Not an expensive upgrade gold-wise, 300 gold, but it does cost 500 food. Oh, the Viper discovers in the worst way possible that there is now a castle here. Knights do manage to kill a couple of eagles. The Viper might want to get iron casting for these eagles if he's going to double down on them. And Biel's now down seven villagers, so... Ooh... I mean, he secured the gold, but what the hell are you going to do with gold and no food? This is very sour. 
have to having to abandon eight farms here is incredibly sour he does not have the wood the fulwark does i believe does it still cost 125 wood or did they uh buff that recently i think it still does cost 125 wood basically a mill plus a house which is what a fulwark is because if you look very carefully there is an inn at the top here but uh oh eagles are in here villagers oh i have to delete their own infrastructure Oh no, things are looking real bad for MBL, but Obuchs are out. Where are you guys going? Where the hell are those villagers going? And why have these villagers not run away? Oh my goodness, 11 villager kills, 12 villager kills. Oh my goodness, things are just uh, spiraling out of control here for MBL. All of a sudden he's down 20 villagers. <gasps> Ouch. What? The hell just happened? What the actual hell just happened? All of a sudden, the Vipers got <laughs> 21 villager kills? We need to see that again, because I feel like, well, what, what are we at, 26 minutes? I feel like literally a minute ago, things were a little bit more normal. Let's, let's go back a minute and 10 seconds. Yeah, look at this. Five villager kills. Fine. You know what? Five villager kills is bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to do, you know, not not going to say MBL has a, a good chance here. Especially based on what we know happens in the next minute. But the Viper is slowing down his military a little bit. I don't see a single unit being trained for him except for a monk. So, MBL can hold here, especially with a castle. And the Viper, again, slowing things down with a second TC. Uh, slowing things down militarily. Now, as the game goes on, of course, these two town centers to the one of their opponent is going to absolutely overwhelm. But for now, snapshot at this exact moment. Things are not looking atrocious yet for mbl but what the hell literally look at the timestamp we're at game ends at 26 22 we're at 25 you know what let's do it in exactly a minute 25 22 and let's see in 60 seconds 60 in-game seconds which is uh what is that divided by 1.7 game speed like 35 seconds real human time all of a sudden, everything just blows up for MBL. And how the hell did it happen? Okay, I see a few Obo stuck here. But let's see what's going on. Let's do it in slow motion. Because uh, unlike a major battle, there were like four or five different battles happening at the same time here. So let's do it in slow motion. MBL, of course, sees the penetration of the Eagles. Again, this is annoying. Three of your obuchs are stuck here in the gold line. You, you don't really have that much. That's 50% of your obuchs, by the way. No upgrades on them whatsoever. Eagles are at a plus one, plus two. They move south. I think at this point, MBL realizes that his units are in jeopardy. Deletes this wall segment. Not too sure. Okay, he's running away, building a house. He doesn't barely has any wood. 190 wood. I love that cool as a cucumber, he's left these lumberjacks here. It says, come hell or high water. I am leaving these here. I need the wood. Okay. So all of a sudden, we've got two more villager kills. These eagles, warriors. Okay, he's escaped with these ones, but the ones that went south to build a house, inexplicably, as I pointed out, are moving back north. Did he think he could lure the units? Uh, again, this unit has five pierce armor right now. Your skirmisher does three damage. No bonus which means it does one HP of damage. The archer, five minus five is zero. No bonus means they do one HP of damage to a 55 HP unit. You've got 11 units that fire on a one. So you're doing 11 damage to a 55 HP unit. It needs five volleys to kill a single Eagle Warrior. So I don't know what the hell is going on with those archers. The Obuchs do move south. The monks reposition their sniper lines from monk to Obuch. Looks like they will get one. If not more. Yeah, they got just just the one because they get sniped by the archers. Meanwhile, the eagles here are running amok. And literally seconds later, the entire economy of the pole has been gutted in half. That was a, a missed opportunity there. I got real excited during the actual gameplay, but... Let this be a <laughs> let this be a lesson to you. I mean, why did MBL not escape with these lumberjacks by deleting the house? He's got 46 population out of 85. Let this be a lesson to you. You cannot let your guard down 
this is a, a war game. This is not a lubby dubby. Hey, don't don't hit me if I don't hit you game. No, no, this is a war game. If you let your guard down, even for a second, you go from five villager losses to 21. And now look at MBL, literally almost half the villager count, 27 to 52. Basically exactly half. And again, the Viper did slow things down. He's only got nine eagles left. Where's that monkey still over here? So not really playing a role. The archer units are not going to do anything here. Might as well just uh, honestly just attack with the villagers. Uh, you'll do the same one HP of damage. <laughs> the Obox, to be fair, did take the fight. They did take the fight. They do have six kills. So I wonder if MBL, instead of retreating right, should have retreated left. That he could bring these Obox north and intercept. But oh my goodness, doesn't really matter. Again, literally in a minute. 35, whatever 60 divided by 1.7 is. I'm assuming something around 35, uh, I think, is enough to change a game from I'm in a terrible but not atrocious position. I do have a castle up. I've got gold miners for all the good that that's going to do me. I do have a market, so I can, I guess, use the gold to buy something. I don't really have very many farmers left. I don't have enough wood for that many farms Although, I guess MBL could have gone back here, right? This is nice and secure at the moment. So maybe he should have, instead of running the villagers north, he should have run them into the TC, at least left, or at least maybe run some of these villagers north. In any event, let's not try to second guess a million things. The bottom line is things escalated insanely quickly here. And the Viper getting up to castle first, plopping down the siege workshop, which to be fair... Did it really accomplish much at the end of the day, that uh, Manganel, or was it more the Eagles busting their way in through here? Although I guess he did bust his way in through here as well. So ultimately, yeah, it just the Viper a bit ahead of MBL in all respects. And even though MBL ends the game with 19 army count, it is not a good army count, with the exception of five Obuchs and a single knight who has uh, about another, I don't know what, three, five seconds left to live. Eagle Warriors do come with a plus three against the Cavalry bonus. And wow, wow, wow. Just the general confusion. We've all been there. We've all been attacked in various areas. Didn't know what to do. Moved units left, right, left, right. Maybe MBL was tired. Maybe this was the last game of the evening. Maybe it was, uh, I don't know what reason, insert reason here. But oh my goodness. Literally in 60 seconds, things just completely devolved and completely spiraled out of control for him. And these 30 ranged units mean absolutely nothing to these Eagles. PKPM, middle of the game. PKPM for MBL right at the beginning of the game. Economies, uh, what is that, about 2,400 apart? So about 20% 20, 20 bigger economy for the Aztec, which is not surprising. MBL with 733 on stone, which divided by three is how much extra gold he got. The Viper did manage to take a relic in the middle of all that, did get that one Obuch conversion, destroyed four buildings, and he destroyed the four correct buildings to penetrate the base from the west, from the south. And wow, in the blink of an eye, 16 extra villagers bite the dust. And the Viper doesn't even have iron casting, which tells you just how powerful these eagles are at running down, chasing down and killing the villagers. And MBL with, I think, maybe a few... Miss, uh, miss clicks or misdirection. Like I said, this army should be here. These Obos, fantastic job. Got the job done here. But some of these villagers need to be reallocated here. Now, that's easy for me to say with the uh, God's Eye caster vision, seeing exactly that there's nothing on the map heading towards him. But for MBL, who never knows if he's ever going to be under attack again, there is an eagle still left here attacking the house, keeping an eye on things. But if MBL... Had the vision we had, probably, who's kidding who, would have sent some villagers back to start getting food. Because this is a lot. Of, gold is nice, but when you die like a pharaoh with 528 gold in your pocket, gold really doesn't mean very much if you only have 58 food. And ultimately, wow, the Viper just takes an absolute chaotic but amazing engagement at the end. Guts the economy, literally Velociraptor to the stomach style, eviscerates the pole economy takes the W, but GG in a short but brutish game to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.